So, today is January the 21st, and on this day in 1944, the Germans unleashed the final wave of their bombing campaign against Britain. Um, the Blitz was a, was a pretty tough experience for people living through it, and uh, it reminds me of a great story that my dad and uh, his sister, my auntie Reen, used to tell. They were talking about the doodle uh, bugs, the buzz bombs or the V1s that were sent over from, uh, from Germany to, to bomb London. And they were called buzz bombs because the engine was quite noisy. And the way they operated was they, they would come buzzing over uh, across the English Channel and over to London, but they had just enough fuel that was calculated to be able to drop at the right place so that you knew when it was going to drop because the buzzing would stop. So they told the story, they were walking through London, and this was before uh, they were evacuated out to the country. And uh, they were walking through the streets of London, they heard that bzzz noise above them, and then suddenly they heard it cut out. You know, they're, they're a pair of kids, so they just ran to the closest place they could find to shelter from the bomb. And they looked up, they suddenly realised where they were. They were in a milk bar. And I, I don't know what a milk bar is, but I now know because I looked it up and they told me. It's like a kind of milkshake shop. You get glasses of milk in there and then eventually groceries. It was a kind of non-alcoholic alternative for younger people to pubs, apparently. Anyway, they're in there. And one of the marking, distinguishing features of such places was they often had great big plate glass windows across the entire front. So they suddenly realised where they were and realised that if that bomb dropped close by, they were going to get covered in shattered glass um, from those windows. Luckily, of course, that did not happen. And uh, they lived to tell uh, another, a tale another day. But um, that was a great story. So uh, I thought, well, let's have a cocktail to mark it. So first of all, I stuck on one of my favourite albums. So this isn't my, the original one I bought. This is one I bought more recently, a Japanese import 40th or 50th 40th anniversary edition of London Calling my favorite song London Calling is playing at the moment or oh, one of my favorite songs and I'm going to make a cocktail called The Londoner and uh, it's a little bit ironic really it was developed by a New Yorker uh, called uh, um, Phil Ward I believe he used to work in the in Death and Co and a few other places but it seems like an appropriate cocktail to mark the uh, the last part the dying gasps of the blitz so let's go straight to it. It is unsurprisingly a, a gin drink, a London dry um, is what we're going to be using, beef eater, and pouring two ounces of that good stuff into our mixing glass already filled with ice. Two other ingredients. We're first going to put uh, half an ounce of uh, sweet vermouth, sweet or red vermouth, in there like so and also half an ounce of Grand Marnier and that should balance out quite nicely there we go and a couple of dashes of Angostura orange bitters like that songs come to an end behind me suggesting that maybe this video is going on too long sorry about that no, sorry not sorry right? we're, we're going to stir this for about 20 seconds listen to that that noise, it's kind of, is it worse than a buzz bomb? Yeah, I don't know, well, hopefully less painful. And we just stir until it's nice and chilly. And achieve the, the correct amount of dilution. About 20 seconds should do that. And we're going to strain that into our chilled cocktail glass. And I'm using a Nick and Nora glass. I was given a couple for Christmas and they are quite fantastic to drink. Apparently they're used so that you can reach your drink without having to tilt your head back so you can look straight at the camera. It's developed for a, a movie, the, the Thin Man maybe. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's just pour this drink into our chilled cocktail glass like so. And then there's one garnish and it's, um, it's going to be a flamed orange twist. So I'm going to get a sharp-ish knife and cut a nice healthy twist of the orange and it's actually a blood orange kind of interesting but I don't know if that will change anything at all and to flame it what you do you need a you can use a match I'm using a lighter and you go like that and then you just do this you can see the little squirt of the oil coming out there um, that sets on fire we put that into our drink and we see what we've got Oh yes, I think that's tastier than a, a glass of milk any day. And here's 
to the indomitable Blitz spirit of London. Cheers.